The Tuesday, October 13th, 1992 school board meeting is called to order. The first item on our agenda is adjustments to agenda. I have a adjustment to the agenda. There is a request by the finance chair to add a action item under the finance subcommittee report. So if you will note that. Any other adjustments to agenda? Seeing none, we move on to approval of the school board minutes of the meeting of September 15, 1992. Are, they, are there any adjustments? Rosemary? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a question um, on Ann Chapman's vote. Was that an abstention or a negative? No, I, I did vote against, against that. Connie had already been made aware of that. Oh. Are there any other? Seeing none, the minutes stand approved. We move on to comments by the middle school and high school representatives. I call upon the middle school representatives. Hi, my name is Christy Sternberg, and I am once again one of the school board representatives for the year 92-93. The middle school student council is led by the new advisors this year, Anine Stanford and Andy Strout. We have begun planning the first dance and the dances, the dates for others. The date for the upcoming dance is Friday, October 30th, and we are planning to incorporate costumes into our Halloween theme. We are also planning on holding events other than dances, which the fifth and sixth grades can participate in. Now I'd like to introduce my new partner, Jen Canal. Thank you. Hello. The fifth graders have approached us about helping a school in Florida hit by Hurricane Andrew by donating school supplies. Although we haven't worked out all the details, we are planning to hold a drive sometime in October or November. The fall sports program is off to a fine start, and we are hoping that the rest of the year will prove just as successful. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Christy and Jean. I call upon the high school representatives. Okay, uh, it seems like we have finally uh, settled into the high school and things have been actually pretty quiet around, um, around there. Friday night will be our, our fall sports pep rally. Um, we hope to have a, a, a large turnout as we always do and the whole community is invited. Speech and debate has started and um, our first meet will be October 31st and it's at Brewer and it's expected that, that both teams will do quite well as we usually do. Um, last month, the SAC met at St. Bartholomew's for our annual retreat, and among things, we discussed changes to our school constitution, and um, those will be further discussed in, in later meetings. And um, two weeks ago, the seniors had a very successful dance. We, I've heard we made around $1,000, and the juniors will try to uh, beat us in next, next Friday when they have their dance. Well, the Senior Executive Committee met with the administration about senior privileges uh, about three weeks ago, and as you remember from our last meeting, there were some, still some reservations that the seniors had. Um, but happily, a lot of the requests that the seniors have had have been fulfilled, um, chiefly among them being a rug for the senior hallway, and we should be getting that hopefully within the next month. Um, tomorrow, our first class meetings uh, for the year are going to be scheduled. And the seniors will be focusing on um, graduation as well as possible open campus, um, which has come up and is it's very supported among the students. So now we just need to get the parents informed and involved. Uh, so we're going to discuss that tomorrow at our meeting, and we hope that all goes well, too. Um, I think that we've deserved it. And thank you for your time. What time does the pep rally start Friday night? Mm -hmm. yeah. Seven. What is your definition of an open campus? Um, well, we were thinking of having it be something like similar to the um, early arrival, early dismissal um, with parental permission. That's when if the seniors have freeze, then they can leave the campus, um, the school grounds, I guess you could say, if they need to run home, get a paper, or if they want to just go home for a break or something like that, or if they want to go up to the store, um, you know, just something like that. 
just to have a little, allow for a little more freedom because we don't have the senior hallway and like we did at the lobby, which is kind of the congregating area. So we really have no place to go other than our hallway. And when we get the rug, you know, we're hoping that, that that'll bring a change and, and kind of pull us together in the hallway so we're not all scattered. Thank you, Mindy and Courtney. We now move on to communications. Does the superintendent have any communications? Thank you. Uh, I did include in your packet uh, some information on the funding discussion that is not only going on now, but one that we're going to be hearing a great deal about. Uh, you have both an executive summary and a, I think, a, a fairly full report from the governor's task force uh, report so far. Obviously, this is an issue that raises a lot of concerns. Uh, all of us are reading in the paper with some anxiety. Yesterday's uh, article pointed out that even though the state valuation of Cape Elizabeth has gone down, which normally would carry with it an increase in subsidy, as the article pointed out, uh, the state problems in financing being what they are, we're likely to see um, well, we'll be lucky if we only if we are able to maintain level funding. Uh, but those issues are going to be very big uh, coming up. So I wanted to make sure that you had any material that I had on that. We'll keep you posted. Uh, that's basically my communications. I have a couple of communications. On October 1st, Ann Chapman and myself attended the Maine 2000 Forum, which was held at the holiday by the Inn, uh, by the Bay. Um, it was essentially the first issuance of a progress report card on Maine's efforts to achieve national education goals. And we, it was highlighted by a welcome by the, the governor. Uh, we got to meet the new commissioner of education, Leo Martin. And there was the assistant secretary, Diane Ravitch, from the US Department of Education. Um, these, are all, these were all Maine 2000 schools um, that we joined, uh, we became one, a member of, one, of this Maine 2000 last spring. Um, essentially, we broke into the six goals of the Maine 2000 and had discussion groups and then met back as a, as a general forum. And I think what I got out of it was more of a networking with other schools to see what was going on and to share what we were doing. And that's what I found was beneficial. One of the highlights, highlights of the opening ceremony was a reading of the six main national education goals by um, junior high school children from around the state and their interpretation of the goal. And, their, and it was, I think, it was very well done. Um, one of, two of those people were from the village school in Gore. So I think that's a tribute to the, our ex, the ex-superintendent of the district. Kids. And also, I want to let the board know that on October 22nd and 23rd is the main um, state, um, the main school boards association um, fall conference, and Rosemary and I will be attending. And we will report back to you at our next meeting. Are there any other communications? Seeing none, we will move on to the superintendent's report. And the first is the report on the Coalition of Essential Schools workshops. Um, I'm going to ask Frank Miles to report on that since I was not able to be there. And I would also might as well take this opportunity um, to thank people under communications. I, I've been very touched by the cards and good wishes I've had in the last uh, two or three weeks. And uh, uh, it's one of the bad things is when you're sick, you can't do what you want to do, but one of the nice things is that people really do reach out, and I deeply appreciate that. Thank you. Also appreciate the help from the board, my secretary, Connie Brown, the administrative staff, and uh, being willing to come to my house <laughs> and do some business there. So uh, it feels good to be back here, though, too. Frank? Thank you. Um, I want to briefly report on the, the school board workshop that was held Tuesday, September 29th. Um, at the high school library um, at 7.30. There were about 15 people there. And the board's workshop was intended to give the board more information uh, from the high school faculty and the administration about the Coalition of Essential Schools. In order to make a brief summary of the meeting a bit more comprehensible for the viewers, 
Um, I'll quickly review our current involvement with the coalition and describe it as succinctly as possible. Uh, two years ago, the high school received a grant from the Coalition of Essential Schools to begin work on developing student outcomes for courses and to develop alternative forms of assessment for those outcomes. This is a long, slow process on which we're making progress. Uh, the grant has enabled the high school staff members to become more involved with the coalition and, and be part of a school network which is exploring different ways of improving schools based on some common ideas. The coalition was established at Brown University to, to create a high school university partnership devoted to strengthening the learning of students by supporting each school's efforts to review its priorities and simplify its structures. The coalition offers no specific models of schools which can be plugged into any school. If you will, it's not a franchise that you buy or adopt. Rather, the organization tries to promote thoughtful re-examination of school curriculum and structures based on a set of common principles that form a philosophical basis for school improvement. These common principles can be briefly stated as follows. First, the school should focus on helping adolescents learn to use their minds well. Each student should master a limited number of essential skills and areas of knowledge. The school's goals and programs should apply to all students. Teaching and learning should be personalized to the maximum feasible extent. And this implies really small classes and a total student load for each teacher of about 80 students. The governing metaphor for the school should be that the student is the worker and the teacher is the coach rather than a more familiar metaphor where the teacher is the deliverer of instructional services and the student is uh, more often in a passive role. Diplomas should be awarded upon a successful final demonstration of mastery of the essential skills and knowledge. That is, there's an emphasis in the coalition on the student's demonstration that they can do important things. The tone of the school should explicitly and self-consciously stress high expectations of students, yet give great trust and, and have a climate of decency. The principal and teachers should perceive themselves as generalists first and scholars and specialists second. And finally, the ultimate administrative and budget targets should include a per pupil, excuse me, a per pupil cost that does not exceed the current average traditional school expenditure by more than 10%. Now, at this workshop, we tried to focus our discussion uh, around these nine common principles. Uh, the discussion spanned about two hours and we touched on almost all of the principles in our discussion. Faculty interest really focused on a few key aspects of the coalition. First, the coalition provides a network of other schools and educational institutions who are working on similar aspects of school reform and all of whom are interested in creating schools with higher standards. Secondly, in particular, the coalition schools are working hard on alternative forms of assessment with an emphasis on demonstration, performances, and exhibitions of what students have learned and are able to do. Third, of the common principles, the metaphor of the student as worker and the notion that less is more are perhaps the most powerful images for some of our teachers. Both ideas stress developing students with ability to think with some depth and skills about key issues. Many board members uh, agreed with the common principles in general. Nonetheless, they had a number of very important questions about the coalition and our possible association with it. Some of these questions are as follows. What would be our overall plan for affiliation with the coalition and what kind of timeline would we develop for our work with them over the next several years? How do the coalition common principles fit with our district's vision, which we spent time on last year and adopted in the spring? Can we move toward the coalition's vision of school with our current resources? Or in other words, will the affiliation with the coalition really have a, a big impact on our budget? Will affiliation with the coalition provide any unanticipated negative con consequences? Are there any surprises out there for us? What are the advantages for our district to affiliate with the coalition? How does the principle less is more play out in our curriculum? That is to say, will we give up something that we don't want to? What will happen to those teachers who may not be enthusiastic about the coalition? Will they continue to be effective members of the faculty? What's the payoff, really, for the, our association with the coalition for our students? And how will affiliation with the coalition actually change practices in the classrooms? These are all important questions, and uh, we, we will have clear answers for those questions when we make a recommendation to the board uh, uh, later this fall or in the early winter. Last Friday, 
the faculty began in its early release workshop to discuss in a systematic way each of the common principles of the coalition. Uh, we have talked about these principles in many different forms over the last two years, but we are going through them once again in a very particular way. We are also going to begin discussing the coalition with students and we'll arrange for some further informational sessions for parents. We are eager to include all elements of the school community in our exploration of the advantages and disadvantages of our possible affiliation with the coalition. And anybody who wishes more information about the coalition can contact me at school. Uh, we are very interested in it. Uh, we think it, it deserves our careful examination and hope to make a very sound decision. I thought a lot about the workshop and it's been in my mind ever since and I felt a real sense of frustration because I didn't feel like we made a real connection between the board and the teachers and I thought that one of the things that happened was that you know the board and the community keeps saying we want you to raise the standards increase your expectations and I felt like the high school teachers were trying to accomplish, telling, were trying to tell us how they were going to accomplish this with or without the coalition. And I'm not sure that they got the message that we are applauding that effort. I wish we could have spent more time talking about the assessment that they've developed and what effect it will have on the students and specifically what they are doing in the classrooms now to make the kind of improvements that we are asking. And I realize that we have to ask tough questions, that money is a factor, but I think we, we didn't say enough about the work that they are trying to do, whether it's with the coalition or not. And I, I left the meeting feeling that if I had been a teacher, I might have felt a little bad about that. And, and I'm only speaking for myself. I don't know if the rest of the board feels that way or not. And the other comment that I wanted to make was that I think we have to be careful as a board about making individual statements about things such as class size for next year and so forth at a public meeting because this could be construed to, to mean that this is how the whole board feels and we've already decided this when in fact we haven't discussed it yet. So, you know, I, I, I just think that um, I came away feeling a little frustrated about that too because I don't think that that spoke for the whole board. Thank you for sharing that. I, I know the teachers who, are, who have done a lot of work on it, and it's a, it's, it is not as easy as it, as it sounds to, to change practices and develop these alternative forms of assessment. So they would appreciate that very much. Any other comments? Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Uh, we will now move on to setting the subject for October 27th school board workshop. We've had some preliminary discussion about that, and I have, since um, some of that discussion, I have another request. Uh, essentially, we have administ administratively talked about um, doing something with assessment, that is reporting back uh, some specific uh, and trying to make it some focus areas on assessment, particularly in those areas that the board has identified through the goal setting process of uh, major concern. Uh, in addition, a group of special education parents has uh, requested uh, that they have about a half hour time block to give a kind of general informational presentation. Their suggestion uh, to Wendor, the special education director, was that they have about a half hour uh, period of time beginning at 7 o'clock so as not to detract from the two hour, give or take, more or less, uh, general time frame of the workshop. I uh, understand that the uh, special education parents perhaps three or four years ago presented at a workshop. Perhaps some of you were on the board at that time. I think it was six years ago. Six years ago. And five years ago they were denied the opportunity. Oh, well. So there, it was some discussion about it. Well, it seems to me that any time parent groups want to come forward that it's always a good idea to say, of course, and the question is how to uh, uh, make sure that the time frame is one that is compatible with everybody's needs. But that sounded like a good uh, suggestion to me. Uh, if the board is available and willing to come at 7, uh, obviously we could start at 7.30 and then simply finish that and go on. But of course, 
if you really want to accomplish something on assessment, that is going to take a couple of hours. So uh, my suggestion would be that we take them up on their offer of uh, a half hour presentation. I think they have uh, some video that they want to show us. In the, in the past, uh, the parent group had uh, presented before the board with um, uh, slide presentations, oh. which were supported by uh, some uh, audio uh, backup as well. In, in this instance, what they would like to do is to have um, parents representative of the system, across the system, uh, just um, present to the board uh, for awareness purposes um, their view of their children's needs on an individual basis, but also again across the system, uh, and just have an opportunity to share their uh, feelings and their thoughts about uh, children with special needs with the board, which they've not been able to do for the past several years. As Loretta said, six years ago they did, and five years ago they requested again, and it was denied. And, um, and they'd like to meet with the board for this purpose. Thank you. So those will be my suggestions for how we use the 27th workshop. Any board discussion? How, how exactly are you planning to set it up to talk about assessment? Is that what would be the format? The conversation we have had so far focuses on trying to take um, some specific issues. I know we were going to uh, look at the fourth grade MEAs, not the whole block, but some piece of it. Uh, frankly, I have been somewhat out of the loop, so maybe one of the administrators would like to address that. But that is what our preliminary conversation was. Uh, we also had some interesting uh, data, which if Michael wasn't leaving us, we were thinking of sharing on the ERBs, but perhaps we can summarize some of that and uh, discuss what kind of testing that's uh, suggesting. Uh, we need to discuss uh, how we are going to keep track of the transition to the Chicago materials at the primary. Um, and I think there is certainly something from the um, high school to be shared, as you alluded to it, some of the assessments that teachers there are interested in. Our concern is that um, a two-hour workshop is not enough to give you anything like the global picture. Um, and we do report on tests. The MEAs, of course, are reported at board meetings. And we have some summary information given to you on elementary or grade level standardized testing. Um, but we think that the purpose of this assessment, if we understand your discussions and goal setting, is you want to know uh, with some detail, a slice, if you will, going down through the issues, how are teachers keeping track of this from a day-to-day -day point of view or from a month-to-month -month point of view in addition to the standardized testing? Uh, it is obvious that assessment is both standardized and teacher-driven. And uh, it's also obvious we've had a number of discussions in the board meetings that in the two years that I've been here, um, they've certainly made it clear that we're not, you know, we don't have a crystal clear program in this where you know exactly what's going on. Um, those will be the kinds of issues that we'll try to summarize and, and talk about. Some general overview, but then we'll, no, we'll take a particular piece and look at, at how that works. Um, have I left something out? Does, does, will that include then, for instance, w what kinds of steps we're taking in the curriculum to address concerns we already know about? I would say that's that would be a, a central part of what we would doing would be doing for as far as Pankov is concerned. We've done a lot, uh, I think, since the language arts subcommittee met last spring, and uh, I think folks would like to have that opportunity to share what's been happening there. And I think likewise, the same thing is true in math. <coughs> I'm wondering if if we need two meetings on this or. You know, I mean, I, I can't imagine going through all three schools in two hours. I can't either. I mean, that's one of the one of our concerns too is how how to give you both a general overview and then some particulars. So uh, we'll simply have to work on that between now and then. And if you any of you have any particular suggestions or ideas, please feel free to call me or call the principals. Um, but we will certainly start with a focus on what where we were last spring. 
we've had some grants too in the last two or three years. It would be nice to hear what's come of those. Kindergarten grants. has had a grant in first grade, right? Yeah. And, and I Nancy think Rawls doesn't grant. Nancy Rawls mm -hmm. now have yes. a grant also. Mm -hmm. So is this the will of the board that we have first a presentation by the special education parents at seven and then to have the first of what could be a couple workshops on assessments starting at 7.30? Charlie. Yes. I, I, I think it would be good to somehow get out to the public if we are going to narrow our, our focus or have particular fo you know, focus to this meeting, you know, one school or another. It would, it would be nice if the public could know that. Um, sure, yeah, that's, that's a good point. And, and you know, what, what we may have to do is, um, you know, in the organizing, uh, what our goal is, is to do K through 12 curriculum assessment. I'm not confident that we're there to the point where we can really give you a coherent workshop on that we can talk about how we're working towards it. So it may be uh, the best way to organize this is to take building by building and, and deal with it that way. I do need to talk with the administrative group before I come back with a um, specific suggestion and I will try to make that clear to you before then and I would assume we'll probably start with the elementary simply because that is an issue that we have talked a lot about. Um, so if anybody happens to be watching who's not watching the vice presidential debate, uh, this is a little calmer, I understand. <laughs> or the baseball game. Or the baseball game. We have a lot of competition there. Um, I would, that would be my educated guess about where we'll start. But again, I would like to have a chance to talk to the administrators before I tell you that for sure. A notice could go home, sure. too. So that would focus to parents what topics are going to be talked about. Anyone else? We will now move on to the Middle School Building Project Committee. Well, you know more <laughs> about that, Chairman Brewer, than I do at this point. Uh, I did go to the uh, town council meeting, and they did agree to go through the processes we had um, laid out. I think we talked about that briefly last uh, last meeting. My understanding now is that the um, through the courier we have advertised for community uh, applications and I understand that the chairs of the two bodies are, are working together to come up with a final list. Uh, the chair of the appointments committee, which is Wayne Creelman of the town council, um, will be setting a meeting to meet after the 16th. The 16th is the closing date for okay. final applications. I still need a couple volunteers to join me on that committee. And anyone else? Jan. So Ann and Jan will join me as we meet with the appointments committee. And I will get back to you when that committee will meet. Um, application to the state for special project at Pond Cove. I went to the town council meeting last night and they did in fact approve of our submitting that uh, proposal which has been sent to the state. Uh, once again, we are in the situation of asking the state uh, to consider a rate, a project, which would be uh, some local funds, some state funds, were they to accept it. Um, I explained to the town council last night that uh, I don't, I'm not particularly um, sure what kind of response we will get, uh, but we are asking for an 8,000 square foot special project primarily mm -hmm. geared at a gymnasium at the uh, at Pond Cove and, and I need to explain to people that we don't have a proper space for a uh, what is now considered a, a full-fledged elementary gymnasium uh, physical education program. Furthermore, that uh, shared uh, all-purpose room approach at Pond Cove, which is also used for the lunchroom, uh, also has to serve as an assembly room. There is no other assembly room. So there are other curriculum pieces that are impacted by that. Whether the state will consider that more favorably than uh, what they consider mainly a renovation problem at the middle school, I do not know. As I said before, in rating, we lose points because we have enough square footage to put our students and we are competing for consideration against districts that have a number of students still out in portables, um, which immediately puts us at a disadvantage in these competitive uh, 
uh, applications for state funding. And I also need to point out once again that even were we to have a state approved project, uh, much of this would be disallowed because it's renovation. That's why the focus of the Pond Cove project was the needed extra piece it's called a program piece, which is a kind of thing the state calls a special application. Um, we'll just have to wait and see, as we did with the middle school, and see what, what happens. It's worth a try anyway. It did pass six to nothing, so we got endorsement. I also wanted at this time to just recognize that the town council also approved um, the bottle redemption site at the uh, at the town dump um, and um, our fellow board member Rosemary Reed is going to serve as coordinator this is for uh, nonprofit organizations that uh, better are there for children and youth of our community and uh, from what I understand um, there will probably be one organi organization a month possibly two you want to comment on it? Uh, yes, I had a discussion with the chairman of the recycling committee this morning following the town council's vote last night. And there may be more than one organization, um, but they will be compatible groups. The advertisement and the uh, applications um, will become available very soon. They will be available in the schools and in the uh, town hall. There will be a very short period because the uh, two months of advance notice that this was uh, most likely going to occur and that anyone wishing to do it uh, should respond quickly and the next issue of the Cape Courier will have a special notice regarding the procedure. Thank you. Um, we move on to TQM Fair at Unum. I included in your packet a summary of materials that I prepared for that fair. Um, and uh, Mary Bruns and I did attend part of it uh, as people at the edu uh, Total Quality and Education booth. Uh, I think that the summary that is on the sheet gives you some idea of the specific s steps that we've taken in our maintenance um, custodial transportation unit. Uh, once again, uh, I point out to you that the chart on fourth or fifth page in, the one that looks like this, is supposed to be a flow chart. And one of the things that I was at looking for help the other day is that I know that there are computer programs out there that help you do flow charts. And I'm quick to admit that that doesn't look like a proper flow chart. So I'm busy trying to get help as to how to do it. But the fact of the matter is that we have charted how a, the processes of uh, referrals from the building level right through to feedback uh, ought to go. We can't say yet that it is going totally like that. But it is, thank you. It is at least um, an issue that we are working on. Just one other thing I want to say about this um, at this point. I think it's really important for the board to understand that all of our work in TQM, whether it is this unit, whether it is uh, issues in busing, whether it is some of the system wide curriculum discussions we've had with teachers, what we're really trying to do is get a mindset that talks about continuous improvement. Uh, one of the things I think that has plagued school reform is that we tend to think of school reform as adopting a program or a series of programs and that if we just get the program right, nirvana will have been achieved. It never happens and people are terribly disappointed and I think tend to then flail around looking for yet another program and I'm beginning to sound like Ross Perot. <laughs> um, so <I> better. <laughs> Oh, anyway, um, I think that the, the point I want to make is that uh, continuous improvement is almost a mindset. That we set a goal that we know we're moving in a direction and we know we don't get it right the first time or we don't get it totally right the first time, but that we keep working at it. Uh, as I work with these various processes in TQM, that I think is one of the most powerful messages I would like to to suggest to the board as well as to anybody else in the in the district or parent community um, that is a major change for schools so that the feedback we get from parents and the feedback we get from students the feedback we get from each other that says we didn't do it right 
is not seen as a kind of condemnation that we don't know how to do things, but that we are, in fact, trying to do them better. So continuous improvement, I think, is something I want to emphasize. Okay? Yes. Any comment? National Merit Scholarship semifinalists. And I just want to take this opportunity to publicly uh, commend, uh, congratulate uh, the four semifinalists that uh, Cape Elizabeth has this year, Justin Friedman, David Malik, Lucy Fowler, and Benjamin Lurie. Uh, I think it is always a mark of a good school system that the, uh, we do, in fact, produce some uh, national merit semifinalists, but I think it is essentially a mark of being a good student. Congratulations to you students, to your families. We're really proud of you and take this public moment to congratulate you. And on behalf of the board, I congratulate them also. Um, update on busing changes. We have tried to respond to a number of concerns that have come to us about some of the changes we've made. Some uh, are still pending a review. Um, from the school board, Ann Chapman, um, from the internal processes, Sue Weatherby and myself have already reviewed some of the issues that people uh, call to our attention. I have invited um, two neighborhoods who continue to have some uh, concerns to meet with uh, the three of us uh, at a meeting on, um, hmm, excuse me, get the date right. Thank you, the 22nd. Um, <coughs> partly because the issues that are affecting those neighborhoods are issues that don't necessarily lend themselves to easy solutions, although we can always look and certainly we'll try to find solutions. What I am finding is that it is helpful to use these opportunities to explain to the parent community how complicated busing can get. Um, one individual problem may seem very simple and very resolvable, but frankly, you have to look at the whole chessboard. Uh, you move one shell and there is likely to be a, another shell right beside it. So I welcome the opportunity to have people come to these meetings. Uh, I believe we will have uh, at least representatives. We may need other meetings. We have other issues that we, uh, in the spirit of continuous improvement, will be working on. Uh, but that is where we are right now. For the most part, the busing uh, changes uh, have, most of the obvious bugs have been worked out. and but we are really pretty much on target. But there are still some issues that we need to resolve. Okay, and that's my report. Thank you very much. We now move on to the school board subcommittees and reports, first being the finance sub subcommittee report, and I yield to the chairman, Rosemary Reed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At the uh, finance committee meeting earlier today, the members of the finance committee, superintendent and business manager met to review the financial reports ending uh, September 30th, 1992, and that represents the first quarter uh, of our year. Uh, in those reports that were received, there were no remarkable expenditures, and we are working well within budgeted uh, line items. I would like to uh, report that with 25% of the year gone, we have received 25.94% of our anticipated revenues, and we've had 22.03% of our anticipated expenditures accounted for. Other items that we discussed of interest to members of the general public, um, one which will cause an action item uh, later in my report, and I'll hold is the update on the kindergarten center. And my understanding is that uh, that project is coming to closure and that there are a few other outstanding uh, aspects that, again, within budget will be completed in the near future. Uh, we have uh, a couple of buses who have required regular maintenance. Uh, we maintain buses as well as schools in the school district. Um, we discussed the preliminary uh, state evaluation for 1993 and the potential impact for next year. As one of the high school representatives mentioned, the carpeting uh, in the high school senior wing has been reauthorized. And Mr. Chairman, at this time, I'd like to bring to the board and the public's attention that uh, we have been cited by the state fire marshal for inadequate um, uh, separation of the weight room at the high school. And I request that the uh, 
board authorize the superintendent to proceed with rectifying the conditions cited by the fire marshal and pay for these updates from funds currently in the budget. The estimates that have been given to date are uh, both approximately $4,000 and the proper permits have been uh, ordered and taken out from the town. Does the business manager have more copies of this report that you handed out earlier? Because not all board members have, have this proposal. Could you get those please? Could someone explain the situation at the high school for the rest of the board? Well, uh, in general, the situation is that we have a new fire chief who has gone through our buildings and we did receive um, some citations that we have had to take care of. Many of them are the kinds of things that can be taken care of within the normal budgeting procedure. This one had to do with, the, you know, the corridor outside the pool where the weight um, equipment is kept. Uh, he wanted uh, a separation so that um, in the nature of a firewall, although I understand the recommendations coming back do not specify or we, the original understanding we had about how substantial the wall had to be has been modified somewhat so it's less expensive. But it is a kind of situation we definitely need to take care of. We have gone ahead assuming that the board would authorize this naturally. Uh, with getting preliminary plans and preliminary estimates. We have two um, uh, partially completed bids back in which we will be reviewing in the normal process and choosing the one that is um, the best. Are there any questions of the superintendent? I then entertain a motion. Do you want me to restate? Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, Nobody looks at me. No one's going to make motions. I so move. I would request at this time that the no, board. Spending money, you don't. <laughs> that the board authorize the superintendent to proceed with rectifying the conditions cited by the state fire marshal and pay for these updates with the funds currently budgeted. It's been moved and second. Um, are there any further discussions? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7 0. Thank you. You may continue on. Uh, that's the end of my finance committee okay, report. Then I will ask the town center committee representative, Rosemary Reed. Since our last uh, school board meeting, uh, the town center planning committee has met to um, look at the historical resources and look at uh, zoning language um, for the ordinance um, that will uh, limit the height uh, uh, and breadth, also the uses in the town center of which the school is, uh, re well, represents approximately uh, 90 acres. Um, we have met, we have reviewed both the proposal of the new middle school and how uh, it would impact the campus setting of the uh, schools and how it relates with some of the town center's um, basic uh, desires of pedestrian friendly uh, sidewalks and things of that nature. We are continuing to meet and the next meeting will be October 28th and at that time we will be uh, looking uh, a little bit closer at some of the draft language, the compatibility of the village center to some of the uses, uh, setbacks for the school as we get uh, more information on that, as well as the percentage of the acreage that currently makes up the school campus, uh, how much of that should uh, be considered uh, covered by um, blacktop uh, paving, uh, tennis courts, basketball courts, and of course school buildings. Um, community team, Rosemary Reed. Uh, yes, the community team, um, which for anyone who does not realize, is separate from the school department, although I report on it monthly and I am the school board representative to it. Uh, their next meeting will be held Monday, uh, October 19th at 7.30 in the high school library. And the purpose of that meeting, beside uh, it being its regular October meeting, will be to discuss the role of the community team and to recruit 
people for membership in the team. Thank you. We now move on to unfinished business, and the first is our school board goals for 92-93 school year. Uh, you have in your packet, again, an updated um, proposed school board goals for 92-93. Um, uh, is there any comment from the board or any additions that the board would like to add? I, I know that Ann had a concern about special ed. Do you feel that what's transpiring is going to meet your, your needs, or do you need that spelled out? Well, maybe it doesn't need to be in the school board goals. Maybe I'll just pursue that on my own. Okay. Anyway. Yes. Can I just make one comment about this? I, I think this. This does seem to cover, um, Gary Wakani's done a really good job of covering all the, uh, the mishmash of material we gave her to work with. Um, I was wondering if after uh, we get our goals in order, if, if we can work with the administrators and with Connie to have some kind of timetable so we know when we might be hearing about these various issues. For instance, with the, with the high school, um, the one about the high school, you know, we said we might look at it as part of the discussion of the coalition of essential schools. Well, we clearly didn't cover very much of what's, you know, actually going on in the high school now. So I would hate to think that we would um, just check that off and say, well, we've dealt with the high school already this year. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I would want to see it fleshed out how we would actually go about that. Seeing no further discussion, do we need to move on this and adopt yes, these? Yes, because once they're adopted, then we, our process last year was to make sure that everybody in the building, obviously staff needs to know what the goals are, and that there is a process for faculty meetings and ongoing uh, committee groups to uh, pick up on just those kinds of issues. I mean, how do we uh, address those issues? So um, we will reread them in any minor editing for grammar or you know smoothness whatever we will I'll read them again and uh, get them out to uh, all the staff I think it's also good to have those available in parent groups I know last year remember we distributed them through our dialogue process and we certainly need to do that again um, not necessarily we won't have exactly the same process but the uh, parent teacher associations uh, meetings the form parent form at the high school and so on I entertain a motion. Rosemary. Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the final draft of the um, school board goals for 1992-93 as presented by the superintendent. I would like to outline, if I may, for the public what the general categories are. Please, sir. Student performance and programs, improving communication, building issues, contract issues, budget, system management issues, and board tasks. Do I have a second? Loretta? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, I ask for a vote. All those in favor? 7-0. The goals are passed for 92-93. Mr. Chairman, Rosemary. Make I would like to thank the superintendent for wordsmithing. Oh, I'm sorry? <laughs> for wordsmithing. <laughs> oh, wordsmithing. <laughs> I'm so glad I did those. Uh, the Sunday before I got sick, because I would not have <laughs> <laughs> For once, I was timely. Um, the, the, the superintendent must have had a premonition, because she did many timely things over the weekend <laughs> and that Monday, and she took sick on Tuesday. So um, it, it made her absence a little easier, because things had been addressed. Um, we now move on to the signing of the administrative contract um, we are finally approving a contract for the 92-93 school year, and I hope this is going to be the precipitation of many contracts coming before the board in the next month or so. I would ask the representative from the administrative uh, unit to come forward, and we will sign that.
superintendent. We have finished unfinished business and we'll now move on to new business. And the first is personnel requests, uh, resignation and new staff appointments. Okay. Uh, the resignation is from Michael Efron. Uh, I think I know that all of the board is already aware uh, of his int of his change of plans. Uh, Michael has been with Cape Elizabeth for a number of years in uh, three or four different capacities. Has contributed a great deal to the district, and we will certainly miss him. However, he has been uh, more and more involved in uh, system-wide mathematics education and with the Beacon School uh, process now going on in seven diff different districts, he applied for and was accepted as a facilitator for the York School District. We wish him well. Um, I have to say I think that York's uh, gain is our loss. Uh, but Michael, thank you for all you have done while you've been with us. And he also, in his letter, which I think you have received this evening, pointed out that he um, is going to uh, remain very interested in how we're doing. And he has uh, indicated to me that as a Beacon School facilitator, he will certainly be stopping by and, and sharing with us. Um, does the, do the board have copies? No. Oh, okay. All right. I'll just circulate my copy then. Uh, we do not have any new staff appointments. We are in the process of uh, interviewing both for Michael's replacement and for Janet Nesson's replacement. Uh, we would anticipate being able to put people on board. Uh, I will do that by letting you know what our final recommendation is. When um, our next meeting, we will, depending on exactly what the timeline is, we may well be putting that person on subject to your final approval. Uh, but we will follow the timeline that we outlined um, last month when we talked about the sixth grade appointment. We are uh, in hopes of having a person ready to go, actually go through the transition period of working with uh, teachers. And Michael is also talking about uh, staying with us until we have a proper replacement. So I think that we are in good shape. We don't have somebody tonight. I would just like to comment on uh, the sixth grade position because I, I sat in on those interviews which are still going on but uh, if for some reason we are not able to have someone on board by the time Janet leaves that person will be there for parent teacher conferences with with uh, Janet so that parents will get to meet uh, the candidate and the students are in, in the process of this week meeting the meeting the candidate because each candidate that we picked as finalists are, are in the classroom doing a lesson plan. So the students will get to meet whatever the potential candidate is. And I believe that the high the math interviews are, are in the process. Uh, I entertain a motion for the resignation of Michael Leffen. Jan. I move we accept the resignation of Michael Leffen. A second. Peter, uh, any discussion? Um, entertain a vote. All those in favor? 7-0. And on behalf of myself as a board member and the board, um, again, thank Michael for his years of service. Uh, since I've been on the board, he has essentially been dealing with curriculum, so I never really knew him as a high school principal. And um, I found my interactions with him to be very stimulating and thought-provoking, and we regret his leaving. Rosemary. Mr. Chairman, I did have an opportunity to speak with Michael Efron, and he will still be a parent of two students in our school and will be very active in our school uh, from the parent perspective as well. So we haven't lost him entirely. Thank you. Uh, we move on to board appointment to the sabbatical committee, and um, we have, uh, let the superintendent explain why this is being resurrected. We have one request which has come in um, according to language in the teacher contract. You may recall uh, that if a, an application comes in, we then uh, review it with a committee, screening committee composed of the, uh, the principal of that particular building. Um, 
an elementary supervisor, a department head, the superintendent of schools, and a member of the school board. So what we're looking for tonight is a member of the school board to, uh, to uh, round out that committee to review the application. And we do have a um, volunteer, and that is Loretta Pond, and I will appoint her as our representative. Thank you. Um, we now move on to nominations for coaches and co-curricular positions for the 92-93 school year. Co-curricular fee schedule. I would point out a couple things here. Um, Jackie Petrillo and Heather Tangway under special ed team leaders, they are sharing that position. That does not mean that doubling is not doubling. Um, a single position but sharing um, the issue with Joyce Bell that we discussed last year uh, last uh, month excuse me uh, as to what would be the best way to deal with it we have a recommendation in the packet um, that changes the what would formerly been called department head to a research coordinator we think that's a more accurate description of her duties uh, I do want to say however that as I worked my way through a couple of years on co-curricular and now we have our, with our new teacher evaluation instrument, uh, an attempt to clarify what had formerly been um, uh, teacher and co-administrative duties um, under career ladder. We're trying to shift that over into a stipended arrangement. I can see that we do need to become clearer, especially as to the numbers of uh, people at the high school who were, who were formerly department chairs and how those balance out with great team leaders um, some of the issues that have come up as we've tried to review these things make it clear that we need to lay all of this out in the grid and, and um, review it with our uh, co-curricular fees what we have essentially now are two sets of stipends that deal with student programs one is athletics which is self-explanatory one is what we call co-curricular which means they are student activities run by a teacher with time in, in excess of what they would be using to run their regular teaching duties. And now we have a third section, which in the old contract under career ladder was called co-administrative. And now we are calling that those teacher leader positions. So to clarify all three of those positions, I can see the necessity for coming out with a good grid and laying it all out for you. But just in general purposes, remember that there are three divisions here. Two for student activities, one athletics, one co-curricular. But the main idea is it's a stipend for the teacher running those activities for students. And we have the so-called teacher co-administrative or teacher leader positions for duties over and above the normal classroom duty uh, that we wish to encourage teacher participation and pay a stipend. So hopefully that makes you Either that clarifies it or it just makes it worse. Uh, but I, I can see the necessity for balancing all of this out, and we will certainly be doing that as part of our budget process this year. With that as a background, the nominations are Bridget Kingsbury, Policy Debate, uh, Patricia Monterio, Sophomore Co-Advisor, Tracy Brennan, Freshman Advisor, Joyce Bell, Team Leader uh, slash research, research Coordinator, uh, and Jackie Petrillo and Heather Tangway sharing the special ed team leadership position at the uh, high school. Um, and to make this one vote, athletic fee coaching assignment, Brendan Hickey, varsity ice hockey, uh, noted as a change. We did vote it before, and uh, that's, this is a substitution. Scott Shea, JV girls basketball, Steve Conley, 7th and 8th grade B soccer team, Kurt McCandless, JV boys basketball, Rick DeFusco, freshman boys basketball, Dave Allen, 7th grade girls basketball, and Larry Greer, boys indoor track. And I would note that Rick DeFusco is a change. We had already filled that position and there's been a change, so that, that is a substitution. Thank you. I, uh, I have a question. What, what's the seventh and eighth grade B soccer team? I thought there was only one. I thought there was one big soccer <coughs> team for each. Nancy team. I, this is great. I hope everyone's watching because I'm going to answer an athletic question. <laughs> I want to be sure I get full credit for this. <laughs> um, we had so many seventh and eighth grade boys that came out for soccer that we needed to have a third team 
and that's what that B team is. Oh, I see. So this is just a one-year? Yes. In our budget this year, we had allowed for a third coach for each sport. And we're taking the opportunity, advantage of that, for soccer. Thank you. <laughs> Isn't that so, great? So he's been serving as the co soccer coach then? Pardon me? Has he been serving as a soccer coach? Yes, he has been, right, since about into maybe the first full week of school. Because I, we had something like, this part I'm not going to get right, but <laughs> 70 to 60 to 70 boys come out. And in order to give them enough playing time, uh, we developed a third team. And many of our triple C partner schools also have third soccer teams. So we've been able to really develop a good schedule for them this year. Rosemary. Nancy, you did get that right. <laughs> uh, I just had a question regarding Tracy Brennan as the freshman advisor. Is she the only advisor? Yes, she is. Thank you. I entertain a motion. Rosemary. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept it. Uh, excuse me. I move that we accept the co-curricular and the athletic coaching assignments uh, as presented in the October 13th, 92 uh, school board meeting agenda item 8C. Do I hear a second? Loretta? Any further discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Believe it or not, that was the final business on our agenda, and it is only 8.33. You lost your chance to <laughs> hold the only hour-long meeting <laughs> that I ever would have had. I also, I, also, Just a quick. <laughs> I also have to tell you that the, uh, having attended the, uh, the town council meeting last night, theirs was also a very short meeting. So. Yeah, you see, if we didn't have to state the whole motion, we could have been right here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> if we were just saying, so move. So, so my, my change in the rules prolongs the meeting. Um, I have dates to remember. The school board workshop on Tuesday, October 27, 1992, will start at 7 p.m. with a special education parent presentation and at 7.30 uh, on assessment, and this will be held in the high school library. Um, the school board meeting for Tuesday, November 10th, at 19, uh, 1992. The finance subcommittee will meet in the superintendent's conference room at 6.30 p.m., and our meeting will convene at 7.30 p.m. in these chambers. And we will be having a policy subcommittee meeting on October 28th at 10 o'clock in my um, office. And I'd like to thank whoever provided the Halloween candies. Yeah, thank you very much. Who nice. was it? Neen, I think, wasn't it? Neen Stanford? No, it was the no. lady from the oh, camera. Oh, so <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I now entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move we adjourn. <laughs> Do I hear a second? Rosemary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. Did, did you know